The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on Monday, the 18th of March. You're looking at the Dow up 110. And I must say, if you're looking at this chart right here, this support level, you see this little pink line here called this Chapman Wave Inside Track. It's actually a larger uh, channel to the upside. It's got a little mini channel. And it's been holding in this mini channel. And I'm watching, let me just do this for one second here. If you're looking at the uh, nine period exponential moving average, uh, which I use, I call it the indicator of last resort. Why? Because it's the very last one that finally turns up or turns down. Uh, look at this. It's so close to turning down, yet it just doesn't do that. It's like walking this green line. The nine period moving average, one go under the 14. Uh, we're looking at the uh, last time it did that was back in when it went from pink to green, November the 3rd in the Dow's case, I believe it was. Yeah, November the 3rd. So since then, this green line has just been in place. And even those very sharp sudden turndowns did not turn the uh, nine period moving average pink. So it's a very nice indicator, but at the same time, for subscribers to the opening call, we do have uh, so far it's been working a short, a very besides the long term long positions, which we're not touching at all. Um, the shorter term, we do have a sell, uh, just a short term sell, and we'll see if that's going to hold. Now look at the, look at this. This is quite important. If you're looking at the QQQ, it keeps getting so close to turning down. And it doesn't. It had one out of since it's more, the, the October low, and then that November thing. I think it was the six turn to the green side in the nine period moving average. It had one day that it went negative. That was on the fifth of January through the sixth through the eighth. It was a weekend, and then it went back to green. And and since then it's been green. It's getting closer to turning down, but it has not turned down yet. So I just wanted to talk about these are indicators that I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Very simple indicators you can use to help uh, in your uh, an analysis of uh, stocks and the ETFs, etc. Even the currencies, whatever's moving. Uh, so here we are, up 127 to 38,839 in the Dow. The S&P had a much stronger move to the upside uh, earlier on, and it's holding that. It's actually gained. It's up 50 at 5,167.48, getting really close to the 51.65 all-time high of about a week ago. Um, this is a leg. Now, this is going to be something that I'll be discussing in my webinar tomorrow. When we're looking at weekly charts, what would make us negative? Well, so far, there isn't anything really that's negative. Look, the price is way above the nine period moving average. The nine is way above the 14. The MACD is very strong moving average conversions, divergence. The stochastics starting to decline a little bit, but it's still at 92%. That is really good. The, the blue line, that's the on balance volume, uh, did make a little double top and is pulling back, but uh, the market has ignored it so far. So I'm going to be discussing what are the implications if this is only in a B and the Chapman wave, a buy signal that gets upgraded to a buy mode, which the weekly is, implies that it should go to at least a peak C, then a pullback, and then a leg D, which will go to a peak D, four higher peaks to a peak D, and we're only at B right now. That's still very positive. Does that mean that there could be a sharp pullback? Yeah, you could have a pullback. You could pull back to the green nine period moving average of 5,044. <laughs> we were there just a couple of weeks ago. You could even go down to the 49.59 level, the 14 period moving average. But what would take this green line to turn pink? You'd have to see a, a slump in the S&P. I don't know what's going to do it unless the Fed says something that the market really doesn't like. You'd have to see a slump kind of in the low 4,800s. 
So, so far, I'm taking that off the table just at this particular point. We're only dealing with the shorter term. And if you look at the QQQ, the index 100, yep, walk in the nine period moving average had a nice bounce so far today, up 6.20 at 440.13. Uh, yeah, we are starting to make lower lows and lower highs. The week is young. We'll see what happens. But this is a peak C in the weekly now. Is there a chance that we could see over the next three weeks or so uh, peak C's go to D's in all the different indices, even the S&P? Look, the Dow itself, INDU, is um, at a peak B. It doesn't take much now to get it to a C, and then you have a rest of it. So it doesn't mean that sometime in April we make a really serious top? Or is this uh, um, a digestive phase, phase unfolding now with uh, semiconductors Taking a bit of a breather, although they're up today 4.41, the SMH at 222.25. You can see making lower lows and lower highs. Uh, the nine is still over the 14, but you can see it's just it's getting a little harder to do. So maybe we're looking at a rotational correction in some of the areas. Let's go to the IWM, talk about rotation. Uh, we haven't seen the big rotation into the small caps yet. That is a concerted effort. We've seen nice bounces, but not a concerted effort. 202.15 down 25 cents. Very close to seeing the nine period moving average turn pink. Hasn't yet. And the weekly charts at a peak D already. But you can have a recycle. You go sideways. You can just consolidate. You don't have to break down. So this is a very important moment as far as I can see it. If you're looking at the gold, gold contract is up to uh, to 2,163. Uh, let's look at silver. <clears throat> silver was actually acting a little better than gold last week. And now it's uh, up 0.03 at 2,541. Inner leg C. And we're looking at that weekly chart, which is slowly improving. You did see the nine period moving average for the first time in a while. Cross green, go to green at the close on Friday. That's important. Weekly chart. Not too much to see there. Look at high-grade copper. High-grade copper is still acting so strongly. This is a good market sign. Uh, let's put it this way. Uh, economic sign for the global economies. Now, talk about the global e economies. Look at this. This is the Vanguard total return. This is the world stock ETF. Made an all-time high above the 109.30 high of November of 2021. Plummets down to the 70s. and comes all the way back to 110 0.02. That's what it was 70, 80 cents above the all time high from November of 2021. Now it's taking a little bit of a breather. The nine is still over the 14, still acting quite well. So we'll, we'll be monitoring this because it's the world and it's already making a peak D in the weekly chart, but the technicals are still very strong. I would say that I can consider this uh, a kind of a mixed market, mixed areas. But the consolidations have, have all been high-level consolidations, meaning that there hasn't been a major turn down. You've just been rotating sideways for the consolidation. I wanted to show you the uh, EUR USD. That's the euro dollar currency pair. Pulls back quite sharply. Still technically uh, OK. But the nine period moving average uh, is over the 14, but that weekly chart has a strong 200 period moving average of 1.09 as resistance, and here we are at 1.089. Uh, let's just do the USD JPY as we go to the break. USD JPY, that's the yen. Very nice weekly upside. It's up uh, 16 cents at 49.2. I'll be back. That's a chapter. Tiger conditions are up 127. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Attention all opening call subscribers. Next Tuesday, March 19th, Basil Chapman will be hosting a live 90-minute webinar for all subscribers. From 4 to 5.30 p.m., Basil will take subscribers through an educative journey, giving insight into how he will approach this volatile market. Basil Chapman's opening call newsletter has a 30-day money-back guarantee for all first-time subscribers, and all subscribers get access to his trove of webinar archives, so you have nothing to lose. Go to the Newsletters tab of TFNN.com and sign up today. We'll see you March 19th. TFNN, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 Internationally at 727-873-7618 uh, We're back, dollars up 120 Now we're looking to ask the question about uh, SCCO This is uh, Southern Copper Up 96 cents at 103.96 A really spectacular move uh, in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen sessions going from the seventy eight uh, level is now at one hundred and three point ninety six and that's been almost like one straight up move. Uh, you look at the weekly chart, just a monster leg to the upside, one of the biggest legs I think I've ever seen in Southern copper. <clears throat> Let me just check it out here. Mm, yes. Oh, <laughs> not only is it one of the biggest legs, the leg itself is probably bigger than uh, a lot of the uh, uh, moves to the upside, uh, certainly on a monthly basis. So, yeah, this is absolutely terrific uh, action. And as I was saying, if you're looking at, you know, we, we used to talk about, they don't talk about that much anymore, Dr. Copper. Dr. Copper was a way of saying internationally, if copper is doing well, usually world economies are doing okay. That's the reason why I went to that VT, Vanguard World Total Return. Uh, and this SECO is, is really demonstrating that very nicely. FCX is another one in the same area. <clears throat> Not quite the same chart in the monthly chart, but wow, isn't that a nice leg D? Uh, yeah, leg D as well in the daily chart, trading at f up 48 cents at 45 10. So this is really terrific action. And look at the way it broke the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone that it had been oh, for about a year. It just kept coming down. It couldn't break that resistance. And then it tried once back in, I think it was November, December of 2023. It failed and pulled back. And this month, it has just climbed much, much higher right through it. So, yes. Yeah. So let's go to so the question on CCO. Um, I like it. You didn't ask me anything about it. You just wanted me to look at it. And all I'm going to say is 
This is the stochastic is flat at 95.64%. That is really a good sign um, because when you see that it just pops up like that and it curves over in the stochastic and then comes back down, usually the price goes with it. In this particular instance, the price is holding well. On balance volume is very overbought. That's just a single uh, part of the little puzzle here. The magni is very strong. The relative strength has just gone to a little overbought. So I like it very much. And you didn't ask me anything. So I'm just going to say to you, congratulations, you're long. This is a terrific long position. But I, all, all I would say is in, in the context of what to do now, um, you can expect some kind of a pullback. The gap is just uh, in the 90s. And here you are at 103.74. The gap, the low of <laughs> just Friday's low was um, 94.83. And uh, Thursday's high was 98.20. So you got a little bit of a gap there. That's probably something that would be filled if there was a pullback. I like it. Just in terms of, um, in terms of money management, all I would say is, you know, taking a little bit off here, did you expect in one week that it would go up uh, almost 20 percent? I, You know, that's it's a lot. So that's all I'm saying. I think it's looking terrific. Absolutely. It looks visually it looks a little overbought because it's got this huge spiral to the upside. But, you know, it can have a, a high level consolidation and then go higher. So I'm just saying you didn't ask me my opinion. My my gut reaction right now, based on the technicals, let me just grab the 120 minute chart. Yeah, even with a 120-minute chart, you could pull back at th about three points or four points. And if you take just a little bit off, you could even just put it back. It's, just a, it's a way of controlling the position so that you are adding to it appropriately. You're taking something off, but you're keeping absolutely keeping your core position. This is just part of a trading. Or oh, you just don't want to bother at all. You say, hey, I'm in. I don't think it's coming back to my initial price. I like it. I'm not going to mess around. So two things. One is... If you want, take a little bit off now. You could plan to put put it back maybe three, four points lower. <clears throat> and the other is don't do anything. My, my preference is to actually take a little bit off. Uh, take a little bit off. Uh, um, had a note from Michael saying uh, he's still got his core position. He's taken, uh, as we've discussed, over a period of a year or so, he's taken bits off Broadcom, semiconductors. Uh, it's... Hit a 1418.17 high, 1418 a couple of weeks ago. It's had a ton of round numbers. Even today, um, it had a low of 1241. That doesn't mean it couldn't, it couldn't be taken out. But when I see numbers like that over and over and over, get, um, it's, it's, just, it's almost like round number fear of missing out. That I've got to get it, so I'll just pay anything and I'll pay that round number. You usually put in 0 0.3, 0 0.20, 0 0.0, whatever it is. And if you're grabbing it like this, it means you really want it. So um, that just says to me, from the pattern, it's in a cell signal that's been upgraded to a cell mode. A Vagio, it was a Vagio, now it's Broadcom well, for a long time. It was taken over, but the symbol is still the AVGO symbol at uh, 1245.11, up 961. Uh, it's in a sell mode on the daily. The weekly chart is still holding really well, but it has pulled back in a peak. Yeah, I think there's a consolidation going on in the semis. Um, we actually are short the semis. Um, so far, it's worked out okay. Uh, but the week is young, the day is young, the hour is young. Uh, so that's that next question I had was MP. Yeah, MP, correct. MP is in a this decided uh, down, down mode. It's trading at 13.26, uh, down 0.64. What is it called again? MP Materials. Uh, yeah, this is really looking very poor. Uh, I, I agree. And there was another one I wanted to do. So that did that, did that, did that. Oh, SM in the den. I saw SMCI. SMCI. That's <clears throat> no, SMCI is the wrong one. SMCO. SMCI. Hmm, this looks quite good. 23.32.02. What is it? It is. Oh, this is Hilton something or other. Oh, is this a, just a Hilton Small? Hilton. Hilton Small something. Huh. 
Hilton Small Mid-Cap Opportunity. Oh, this is one of those opportunity stocks. All right, well, uh, that's a little different altogether. It does look quite good, doesn't it? But they, they're kind of dangerous. So S SMCI, that's what we're looking at. And SMCI is super micro company, sales, sales servers, solutions, uh, architecture, high power, I, AI. Um, yeah, whoa. So there's this whole cluster. I can't, I, I've even stopped putting in the number of round numbers. It had a 1,229.00 all-time high. That day that it did that, it had a 12, 12.00 open. It's had a ton of round numbers. It has um, open today of 1,107.00. All I can say is there's something going on here that says to me there's probably a consolidation going on in these very big high techs. Uh, this, is, this is, of course, um, <clears throat> in the, the super micro in the whole survey area, I guess this is hardware and software. I don't know. I just I, I, I get very nervous when I see that, and it's not going anywhere. And arm is a arm. Arm is holdings uh, in the semiconductor area. Uh, 164 time high, round number high on the 12th of Feb, and here it is at 130.09. Keeps having round numbers. I don't know. Not going anywhere. I'll be back. Dow's up 142. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of Basil's educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day, 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks. We're back, and I had a question about Alcoa. AA is the symbol of trading at 31.27, up 83 cents. Yes, this is going right to the 200 period experience. Moving average is a leg D. Leg D is where you have to say, oops, um, some, uh, anything can happen at D. Your objective is to get to a D in a buy signal upgrade to a buy mode. And then when it gets to D, you do a reassessment. That's where you have to do uh, an analysis of does it have an instant restart? All sorts of things happening. Is that going to be looking at peak D in the weekly chart? Very quick, peak A, peak B, peak C, then a D. Uh, when it does that, I'm always a little nervous because I'm anticipating some kind of a pullback, and that's exactly what happened here. But the weekly chart is re, um, kind of arched over, and now it's starting to make a cup formation, and it's improving. So Alcoa is in the area. So I'll be talking about stocks like Alcoa in my webinar tomorrow. I want. I, it's a little different to my usual webinars. I usually I have like 45 or 50 slides that we go through. We go through all these different patterns. I discuss them. Um, in this particular instance, I'm going to show some of the techniques that we look for. And then I'm going to look at many stocks. For instance, Alcoa is one of them. Stocks that have that are in the uh, cyclical area, some secular, some cyclical, um, and when are they ready to start performing? For instance, steel looked like it was ready, and then it just sort of had a fabulous move up uh, end of last year into the beginning of this year. Now it's just stalled. The Van Eck Vectors Steel ETF. Here's a technique that I'll be discussing as well. Very simple. You take two lines, you just draw them to the tops of the uh, candles, and that gives you the inside track. Uh, repellent zone uh, to, so it keeps pulling back when it hits it or the propellant zone when it comes when it's, it comes down to the to there it is it has a propellant zone right so when we do this just easy techniques that you can use and it says steel is just kind of in a sideways trading band so when we're looking at pave this all goes together pave is the infrastructure area very strong move and now it's sort of stalling after making an all-time high about a week ago in the 38s it's trading at uh, 3827 right now um, weekly chart peak c monthly chart global x u.s infrastructure development etf i'll be going through this very important this is uh, so you will see the, the concrete area, the uh, steels, the aluminum, you'd expect that they'd be part of this. Well, in this particular instance, you're looking at lagging uh, sectors. The steel sector has really been lagging for a little while. It's, it's done very nicely, but look at the daily charts, just kind of sideways, weekly charts sideways. Um, so I want to be discussing that. Where would you get into certain stocks, certain areas? I had some requests. I mean, we're taking some requests as well that we will deal with. And at the same time, I'm looking at the rotation when, let's just say we do get the semiconductor digestive phase, which really would be appropriate after such spectacular moves. Where would that money go? Well, I suspect that fund managers are going to be looking at areas. It could include the IWM. We don't know yet. It could include the small caps. But I want to look at those areas. And I want to look at the chart pattern that says what to look what would be your um, key metric that you're looking at to be able to go into that? So you can do your own work. I do, of course, my, my newsletter. We've always got uh, positions that we're taking. But at the same time, you can also do your own homework. And it's uh, sometimes it's quite easy, sometimes it's a little bit di more difficult. But these are the tools that you want. So I'm going to be looking at it. I'm going to be looking at the bank stocks. So the question came in um, about Al Alcoa. And I like it very much. I think it's going to slowly, if it can push sharply above the 200 period moving average, look at this. It's been such strong resistance in the daily chart for so long. Look at this. Every time it popped up, it came all the way down. It hadn't even been there. It was there in December, but it hadn't even been there. I mean, I, I could go back. Uh, I will go back. Look. That 200 orange 200 period moving average, the last time that Alcoa touched it was just briefly when it popped above it and it fell in March 
of 2020. Good grief. Look at this. It was the, on the 3rd of March, 2023. It was at 55.74. Since then, it's been down into the 20s right now to 31.26. And this, and it's, look, 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 look. It did that once again over there and then failed. This time, it's making a more concerted effort. It's been a shorter time frame. And that just says to me that the 200 period moving average could turn into a springboard if it could start to trade in the 3250 to 33 area and make this big cup formation, how it tackles the uh, most recent high, that was the high of December the 20-something, 20 27th, at 3504 is going to be really important in April. That could be March, but I'm just saying in April itself. That's really important. Why do I want to do that? Because the weekly chart, let me show you, look, the weekly chart is just starting to repair the damage of pulling back so sharply. Uh, it, last week, it went green on the nine-period moving average. It's, it's having a slightly higher high today, and that's important. So that's what I'm looking at. How do we, what are the stocks that we would like to get looking out? Where are the prices that we would get them at? What is working? What is not working? It's as simple as that. Uh, another question I had was, let me see if I can find it over here. Um, yeah, Airbnb, E, B, and B. There we go. A, B, and B is the symbol trading up $1.43 at 162. Let me just refresh over here. There you are. There it is. So it's just pulling back a little bit. It had 168.19 high just recently. It had 166 opening price. It's trading right now at 162.09. Had 167 round number high the other day, 168, I think it was a round number open, and now it's trading a little bit. I, how these round numbers unfold over a period of not just short term, I'm talking about two, three weeks is going to be very important. As I say, when I see so many in so many different areas, we were looking there mostly in tech and high and and uh, semiconductors, and then we've seen them everywhere. Look at this. Would you expect that the stock of Buffett, Premier Stock, Berkshire Hathaway, B, conglomerate, uh, just, I mean, they're in everything America. I mean, everything to do with the economy, whether it's insurance, you don't, banks, oil, it <laughs> doesn't matter. And it has a 430.00 all-time high round number with a 422 round number open that day. That's the day, I forgot to put the date. The day of the 26th of February, and here it is, the uh, 18th of March at 4.07, and it still had a couple of round numbers. And this, you, I went back over the weekend, I was looking at so many charts in trying to prepare for this webinar. I decided I wouldn't just write notes and notes and notes. I'd actually do a lot of work in different stocks that are really important um, and just try to do an analysis of them. And I went through a you know, daily chart just to look for round numbers doesn't happen very often. And if you get it at the high, sure, it means something. I'll be back. Dow's up 152. S&P's up 55. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, 
you don't have to worry about that. As Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I request if I could look at Vicor Corporation. Uh, a little weird to say Vicor Corp. That's what it is. Vicor Corporation trading at 35.81 down 25 cents. It's had a huge move in 2023 from the 35s to just about 100, and then it came all the way back down like an Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down pattern, and it's been trying to form a base in the 34, 35 area for oh, for a month, since, since about October, and it keeps coming back to that level. At some point, it either cheats this, and it's had a huge gap down, and it hasn't been able to even test the breakdown high, in other words, one day it's tootling along at 46.21 low. The very next day, the high, so 46.21 and the high next day is 40.38. I, I mean, six point, that's a huge, it's a gap down. And it hasn't gone even close to that level. And this is a chap made Roman candle right here, inverted red one. And you had three days in which to close uh, at least inch a, a short term period for about 60 minutes or 90 minutes to try to hold a 39 level above 39. That would say, oh, now you could go to the upper part of the candle. Couldn't do it. Failed. Just couldn't do it. So this is an arch formation. The dreaded, this is a dreaded H pattern. And we are higher than the low that was made on the 26th of February of 35. Oh, point round zero, zero. Round number low. Isn't that interesting? 35 round number low. Okay, and it has a pretty decent bounce. It goes all the way to 38, uh, about 10%. Then it pulls back, and now it's testing. And what does it do? It comes all the way back down on Friday to green candle 35.21. And now it's it tried to rally, but it couldn't hold it. 35.75 down 32 cents. So this is a pattern <clears throat> that very often when it does this retest of the low and you start to see the histogram of the MACD improving a lot and the stochastic actually having a divergence, it isn't now, but a positive divergence is still, this, this is, oh, wait a minute, this is a negative divergence in the sense that stochastic went down, but the price held, so that's a divergence, slightly different divergence. What I'm looking at here is, this either has the potential and a speed is of the essence. If it takes two days and it can't get above 36.47, that is not good action at all. If in the next two sessions, this, today's Monday, give it one, that's Tuesday, give it Wednesday by 4 o'clock on Wednesday. If it's able to get to the 36.47, maybe Thursday, 36.47 level and close, preferably above 36.47, 
I'd say now you're looking at the chance that it has the lowercase h they can go to a, another h pattern so it makes what I call the lowercase h to a lowercase m formation and that says it could take you if it can break above the high of the 14th of March which is 3717 it could take you all the way to the top of the pattern which was at the 38 3864 ish area so it's a work in progress. That's on the upside. On the downside, as I say, it has two days. It really is speed is of the essence. If it's going to do that, it, it, it starts as it makes this ictus on the right, which is above the 35 round number low that was made um, in February. <clears throat> it's speed. Boom. It needs to move quickly to say, I'm done consolidating. I'm moving higher. Otherwise, the weekly chart says no. It can't get out of this pattern that just constantly, the, the low that was made back in the week of the uh, 17th of November of 35.48. Isn't that fascinating that it can't, it hasn't broken the 35s yet. It just keeps coming back down to it. So very often I've seen charts that do this. And then when you least expect it, this is Vicor high performance power modules for networks. Um, you don't even anticipate that it's going to do it because it looks so ugly. Suddenly it shoots out of the box and it moves higher. So speed is of the, if you're interested in this, I'm going to say nibble on it right here at 35.75 saying, I'd have 35.25 as, I'd have the tightest stop. Why? Because in this particular scenario, um, I am talking speed. So if it hasn't done anything in another couple of days, it's just stuck in the range. It's really, I don't think it'll start to move after that. So this is the opportunity right now. I would have preferred to see it uh, a little higher at 35 because today it hit 36.13. I would have preferred that it pulled back to 36 uh, early in the first hour. And right now it was starting to get to 36.12 and then 36.16, 36.22. That to me would be really nice action just to see that it has the, the kickstart to be able to really push quickly. Otherwise, it's just stuck. So I hope that helps you. Stuck, ready to move, or nothing. So at this particular point, the only way you can test it out is just to have a very small little position. And if it starts intraday to get towards the 3611. Uh, uh, area, you can even add just another fraction, but don't get carried away. I'm just saying as a trading vehicle. Now, what am I anticipating today? I'm anticipating that somehow or other we come off the highs, that this is just an overbought, uh, oversold situation. At the same time, um, let me just write that down. At the same time, it isn't overly negative. You remember, when we were looking at the chance that this could become a consolidation, I said to become a really strong sell mode in all the indices, you need to see um, the S&P, the futures, for some reason. And usually the some reason has to be higher rates. Uh, maybe the next time crude oil, if it does spike to the upside sharply, there's got to be some impetus to say, uh-oh, this is not good for the market. And the Fed has to kind of saying, you know, we're not looking at the rosy look that you look. We've got a little bit of a cloudy situation right now because there have been some inflationary numbers that get us, have got us a little, um, a little not concerned, but watching it closely. Um, so S&P futures down 48 to down 52. S the Dow futures down three. 375 to maybe 425. And then there's a market and it looks exactly like this intraday. This, this chart on the left here of, of ICOR, this is an intraday chart which should look like an arch formation and then it rallies and then it closes at the end of the day, a lousy. And then it has the same thing the next day with a lower low and a lower high. And that to me is a sell mode, really getting the impetus to the downside. Two consecutive, very negative sessions. We've not had that. Buyers have kept coming in all the time. That's why I've said we're taking smaller positions on the short side, but they have so far they've been working out okay. But I'm I'm monitoring very closely the action in what had been real big winners and what had been real big losers. And if the big losers are starting to show that they are just demonstrating 
some kind of capacity to hold on the downside and not make lower lows, I think that's going to be a good sign for a rotation that says fund managers should be, should be looking at something else for the next two months or six weeks or so. A uh, question came in, where was it? PayPal, P-Y-P-L. I haven't looked at this for a little while. PayPal, P-A, P-B, P-C. It's in leg D, just above the 200 pre moving average. Actually, much better. It was once upon a time in the 300s. Then it went to the 50 area. This is not bad. I'll be back in a moment. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So we're looking at PayPal, PYPL, trading at 64.64, up $1.80. Uh, yes, I like this. This is leg D. Leg D is where you've got to be a little bit careful, but it's at the 200 period moving average. It's a little bit above, which is at 63.44. So it's about a point and a quarter above that. That's a good sign. It's already a D, way below the high that was made. Uh, and that big turnaround at 68.21 on the 22nd of January. So that just says to me now there's still a little bit of work to be done, and you can even see that in the weekly chart. But PayPal Holdings, Inc., this is electronic payments, um, this is in exactly the area of the charts that I want to be looking at uh, tomorrow night to say, are these ready to start their own bull move after I just – I, yeah, I would say 300 uh, down to 50. Uh, that kind of uh, that kind of a decline is just it's phenomenal that you can even see that decline and still be in business. But that's what it's done, 
and it looks it looks much much better. It filled the gap very nicely. The gap that was made back on the uh, uh, that was the seventh is trading the 62s, 63s. Next day it gaps down the highs 58.50. It's full that decisively. It's gone back and forth, and now it's away from it. That's important. So that's out of the way. This is, this is a much better looking stock. It's one you can put on your list as something that uh, you can monitor as making higher highs and higher lows. How it handles this week is going to be very important. So with that said, let me just say, so for my, uh, uh, for my, uh, let me just get this if I can right here. So if you go to the front page of TFNN, uh, if I can find it right here, there. If you go to the front page of TFNN, check out uh, the front page. You'll see opening call, newsletter, and it will tell you that there's going to be, here we go, newsletters right here. And there it is, the opening call. Opening call, subscriber webinar, Tuesday, March the 19th at 4 p.m. What tools will be used for this coming two months? What are we looking at? Are we starting to look at stocks that have been hammered and now look like they're ready to move higher? Can we can we 